Hey everyone, Imran with Master Gadgets here and I am back at you for another video. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I do a lot of tech reviews, I do photography and videography tutorials uh, along with some unboxing and reviews. So if you're into those type of things, go ahead and subscribe so that way you won't miss any of my videos. Uh, but today I've got a very special lesson for, for to share with you. I'm going to be doing a Adobe Premiere tutorial on how you can blur things out within a video. So let's just say, for example, you've got a client that you're working with and they got something in the shot, whether it's in the background or the foreground or whatever it might be, and you wanna blur it out so you don't see it. Um, I just recently did a video uh, for YouTube where I did a quick B-roll of my car and uh, I blurred out my license plate. So if you wanna check out that video, I'll go ahead and link it here. You guys can check it out. Uh, but for today's demonstration, I'm gonna use uh, one of my favorite games I used to play, Halo Reach on the Xbox 360. It's a bit dated, I know, but still, this is probably one of the greatest games that ever came out. So for that purpose, I'm gonna have this in the front here, and what I'm gonna do is, let's just say you wanna blur this out. Uh, it could be stationary, it could be something moving. The nice thing about Premiere is, once you set it up to where it blurs, it will actually track it for you. So you can move it around like this, you can move it up, you can move it down, wherever you want, and it will go ahead and track it for you and blur it out automatically. So let's go ahead and dive into Adobe Premiere and let's blur this out. I'm gonna go ahead, I've already got the, the clip here, which we're gonna be working with. That's it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we are going to add an adjustment layer. This will give you, ask you what settings you want, 1920 by 1080 is high def, that's what I normally go with. Depending on which frame per second you've recorded, you want to make sure that you set that up. I generally record at 24 frames per second for normal videos like these. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. It's going to create an adjustment layer here for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to create, we're going to take this adjustment layer and we're going to put it right over our main video. And then we're going to click and drag and make it the same size as our video. So the adjustment layer, if you don't know, basically any edits that you do, uh, the adjustment layer itself is blank so you can go ahead and put all of your edits on here in case you mess up or you need to delete something you can certainly delete it and still be able to preserve your original footage so it's just an extra layer on top of the video itself so once you've got that there if you come on to the left side here under effects control uh, you've got the, the opacity and you've got three separate tools here the free draw bezier the four point polygon mask and the ellipse mask so these two, as you can see, one's an oval, one's a box. These are set points. So if you click on it, it'll generate a box here that you can go ahead and mess with different points to make it the same size as whatever object you are trying to uh, blur up. Me personally, I like to use the free draw so I can go ahead and draw my own points. And we're going to make them a little bit smaller than the actual box. So I'm going to go on the inside of the box, and I'll explain later in the video as to why we did that. And once we create our four box or our four points, the box comes up like this. We're going to come on the left hand side where it says mask path. We're going to hit play and what it's going to do is it's going to track this box throughout the video. So depending on the length of the original clip that you're working with, it might take a while. Um, this one, uh, it's about, uh, I guess about 17 seconds. So as it goes through, it's going to track where the box is being moved, if, if at all. If it's stationary, then it's just going to keep it there. And what it's doing is it's creating different uh, points here as you go through the actual clip and again tracking the box and it's going to make the changes that is that we're going to assign to it throughout the movie so for the sake of time i'm just going to go ahead and fast forward this as soon as that is done i will be back and i'll explain to you how we can go ahead and put in the the blur option Alright, so now that it's done, I'm going to go ahead and bring this slider back in the beginning of the film here. And as you can see, the, the box itself stayed within uh, the, the object that we assigned it to. If you wanted to zoom in, you can come over here and you can look at each point that it, that it marked it at. So for example, if I move this over, you can see at what point on the clip the box is at. So for some reason, if Adobe Premiere X up and depending on the background color, depending on the object you're trying to blur out, sometimes it might be a bit glitchy where it doesn't recognize where the actual item is that you assigned it to. So you, you can move this anywhere that you want. So for example, let's just say 
Adobe Premiere thought your object was still here, but in fact it's not. You can simply move it over to where the object is. And the only problem is, if you do that, you'll have to make sure going on to the next point that it's where it should be. So unfortunately, if it messes up and it's a bit glitchy, you do have to do each key, each point individually instead of it doing it automatically. So once you know that it's tracked it well, uh, what you can do is you can go over towards um, the bottom here and we're going to go into adding our blur. So let me just go ahead and move back towards the front. And you might have to click on the small little arrow here and we're going to our effects panel. And I've already got the blur here. So you can simply type in blur and come down to where it says obsolete and it says fast blur. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. Bring it on top of our adjustment layer. Boom. Right there, it's done. But you're wondering, hey, why is it still not uh, blurry? So come over to your left-hand side here. Scroll down and come on to where it says fast blur. And under the blurriness, this is at zero. So as you turn this up, click and turn it up. As you can see, it'll make it how blurry you want. So now that we've got, let's just say, we'll leave it around 150 or so. That's pretty blurry. Or actually, I'm going to put it around maybe 100. So we'll bring it down to about 100 so it's not as harsh. And But we've got this perfect box right here. So we want to get rid of that and maybe expand it a little bit so it covers the whole object that we're trying to cover up. We'll come up top here where it says Mask Feather. We'll go ahead and you can play with this. You can increase it, decrease it, but as you can see, if I bring it down, it makes it a very hard box. And I want it to be a little bit more feathered. So I want it to be maybe a little bit more like this. And we'll come down to where it says Mask Expansion. We're going to go ahead and expand it so that way it covers a bigger area. So you can go as high as you want. Obviously, you don't want to cut into anything else. So get it to a point where you feel it, it's covered the area that you wanted to cover. So I would say for me, that looks eh, probably about right here. So that looks pretty decent. And then you can go back and mess with your feather if you want to. Again, if you bring it down, it makes it a very hard um, box. And if you bring it up, it'll feather it to where it's a little bit lighter and a little bit easier in the eyes. So maybe somewhere there. If you want to mess with the blurriness, you can certainly mess with the blurriness again, depending on how much blur you want to put in. Um, I like to leave just a little bit so you can kind of see through, but still not be enough to where you can recognize what's behind it. So I'll leave it there. And if I go to play this clip, you'll see that it'll follow wherever you want to blur this out. Uh, it could be stationary, it could be something moving. The nice thing about Premiere is once you set it up to where it blurs, it will actually track it for you. So you can move it around like this, you can move it up, you can move it down, wherever you want, and it will go ahead and track it for you and blur it out automatically. So let's go ahead and dive into the so as you can see in the video itself, as I moved it around, the blur follows and the blur stays in place. And again, if you wanted to adjust it, you simply go in here into your key points right here and you can go and adjust it to in case it's, if it's not following it. So plain and simple, a few simple clicks and you can get this done. Um, so hopefully you guys like this tutorial and that'll be it. We'll go ahead and jump out. All right, now that we're back out of Adobe Premiere, hopefully you guys found that to be beneficial, helpful, entertaining, I don't know, whatever you guys want to make of it. But now you know how to burn things out in a, in a frame, in a video. So feel free to use it at your capacity, however you wish, whether you do it for a client, whether you do it for yourself, or you do it for YouTube, whatever it might be. Hopefully that was beneficial for you. So if you want to have me do some other tutorials, please leave in the comments below on what you want to see. And I will certainly get something together for you over the next couple of weeks. Otherwise, I've got a ton of ideas. I'll continue doing some of the tutorials. Um, but don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, don't forget to hit the bell notification so you're notified every time I upload a video. And I will see you all later. Goodbye.